Hey guys, hey. we have the Wallington Twins here today at another episode of Get to Know Your City. So before we get into where we are and how amazing this interview process is going to be, we do have to mention a few things about COVID-19. Yeah, absolutely. So before we've, we've come in here, all the employees have been checked. Everybody that's actually involved in the interview process is nice and healthy. So yeah, it's super important during these times that we, we do our due diligence and make sure that everybody's safe and ready to go for the interview. Right. So we've done that. Absolutely. So now I'm mentioning where we are. We are at this yes. iconic business, Punko Building Supplies. Oof. These guys have hit 100 years this year so it's gonna be a super exciting interview absolutely okay, let's get to it let's do it Jeff, obviously, thank you very much for meeting us here today. Thank you, thank you. for taking you. off the mask right away. Yeah. Everybody's healthy, everybody's being safe. And we're outside, technically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You might see some of our breath. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. yeah, exactly. So, one of the biggest reasons why, we'll, we'll sort of introduce why we wanted to sit down and inter take an interview with you guys. So, as we were sort of just talking about behind the camera, there's a lot of really successful local entrepreneurs and business people. And our entire lives just growing up, you know, we've been looking for these successful people, whether it's across the world or wherever it is but you know there's people like you guys in our very backyard and we think that's super important for to showcase. sure yeah. that's yeah. great Ed. and we appreciate being showcased absolutely um, yeah we're a little, the little company that's been around here kicking around for a hundred years uh, yeah. Yeah. just a hundred years yeah, just that, yeah. <laughs> congratulations on that I Thank actually you. looked at the stat on that and less than 1% of the company's last for years yeah so and, that's a massive feat. and I think it's uh, like something like less than 4% of companies make it to the four fourth generation right oh so gosh. that's another big thing for us too that it's been family owned the entire time yeah, yeah. Um, we have had at, at various times my grandfather had a, uh, a kind of a junior partner for a little while but okay. it's always remained in the game Amazing. of family which has been yeah. yeah pretty cool and we're actually yeah. older than 100 okay we actually started trading in 1919 but we incorporated in 1921 gotcha. so we go off our incorporation date right gotcha. but okay. I've got letters upstairs from my great-grandfather <laughs> founding uh, customers at the time in 1920 <laughs> trying to get his money out of people really uh, yeah. yeah so I was, I was gonna say so Harry started the company in 1921 yeah. right but at that time it was the pork Coquitlam transfer company yeah, that's right so uh, yeah. originally the, mo the the biggest part of the business the time was the movement mm. of goods so okay, okay. a lot of it was running coal and lumber back and mm. forth between say New Westminster being the big dock at the time yeah, yeah. Uh, mm. or primary port so that was the the, the the bulk of the business mm. uh, was the transfer side of it and then slowly the stocking or inventorying of goods continued to grow and grow and grow gotcha. and then the Poco Transfer Company still actually exists. It's the name oh, of our wow. cartage company. Okay. But it's a wholly owned subsidiary that belongs to Poco Building Supplies. Right. Now. So okay. It still does operate, but mm. uh, Poco Building Supplies has kind of become right. a bigger brand that we try and, to And I mean, for anyone who's just kind of tuning in, and maybe if they don't know per se Poco Building Supply, uh, would you guys just give us a quick intro of who you guys are and what you guys sure. do here and maybe a bit of background? Yeah. Sure. Um, so I'm Jeff Gaylor. Um, I'm one of the owners here now, fourth generation of Focal Building Supplies. Um, this is my cousin, Chris Gaylor. Um, we've been doing this now for 12 years as, as uh, president and uh, technically I am the secretary. Um, but yeah, we've been running the company together uh, for 12 years. Um, and basically we sell uh, construction goods and uh, anything basically to build the house from the, the ground up. Right, okay, mm. cool. And we are kind of lucky too that, uh, you know, when people ask us about being 100 years old, that the family pyramid hasn't gotten so wide at the base that oftentimes that is the problem. Getting into the second, third, and fourth generation, there become so many family members that if they want to become involved, is very difficult because that number of people don't always fit into a business right. uh, at the you know the top or in a management uh, kind mm -hmm. of role. So for us, we've been lucky. It went from our great great Here grandfather John, Harry, right? yeah, to his son kids. John, and John didn't. John did have an older stepbrother that was never involved in the business from yeah. Harry's first. Uh, uh, from his first marriage and then from there it stepped down to my dad my uncle and my aunt wow. um, my dad and my uncle maybe had a little bit b bigger role in, in the company but my aunt's always been involved as well too um, so our dads are obviously brothers and uh, Jeff and I are separated by eight years 
Okay. My, um, Both the oldest of our yes, set all right, all right. Our <laughs> Kind of a bit uh, of a, yeah, we are. <laughs> yeah. And I, have a, I do have a younger sister who's on a maternity leave um, that works for us on a full-time basis. She'll oh. be coming back home for the summer. Nice. On and off, Jeff's had his sister. Yeah, I've got three younger sisters, and I believe every oh, one of our family. siblings has had some yeah. sort of uh, job here. Did you guys here. always uh, kind of envision going into the family business, or was that something that randomly came about? I would say we both started here at an age where that was somewhat, I guess, in your mind that that was uh, yeah. a, a goal or a plan of whether ours or our parents. Yeah. Um, mm. But both of us have gone and done our own thing. Um, right. In the meantime, I mean, yeah. uh, Chris comes uh, came back from New York uh, to make this happen. Mm -hmm. um, he was working in New York with his wife, and, and yeah. I started my own business doing decorative concrete curbing with a friend of mine. Okay. Um, and just tried my hand at something on my own. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And then inevitably, we got the opportunity to come back together. Right. Um, and when we both kind of saw that, uh, it made that far more enticing oh. than either one of us mm -hmm. trying to jump in yeah, yeah. by ourselves. So. Yeah, I think the wheels were probably spinning a little bit mm -hmm. in the company going back about 50 15 years, there had been talk of maybe selling the company. I was oh, wow. abroad, uh, Jeff wasn't involved at the mm. time. And then for us to really make a go of it, it made sense that it was only gonna work if the two of us both mm. kind of jumped in together. Right. Yeah. So that opportunity, going back, I guess, about 2008, yeah. and mm. uh, we've just you know kind of taken the ball and run with it from right. there. And it's been a really good transition. We've been lucky mm. that uh, my dad and my uncle both been supportive, but mm. not uh, in a way that they've, you know, gotten in. Yeah. Gotten Two hands way. on. You guys have the freedom. Kind of really let us mm. uh, get out there and do what we wanted to do and make the changes that we thought were necessary. Mm. And that's led to kind of where we are I think, today. Had we have stumbled out the gates, they might have been a little more uh, hands <laughs> yeah. on. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. But I think we've shown nothing but, uh, you know, positive uh, right. results since <laughs> since we took over. And again, yeah. we came on with, uh, with our general manager who had been here for 15 years plus at that point that already. Been so, then. you know, he, he was definitely uh, a big part in, in our success. And then we hired mm. uh, our current CFO as well, who has a, a history in our industry. Yeah. And again, a, a, just another great backboard for us to sort of help us grow into the position that yeah, we're in now. Right, so, that's right. fantastic, Ben. And, and yeah, some, I was looking at some more of the history as well. I saw that John uh, actually drove a fire truck from Ontario to here. Is that fire truck still around? It like, is. Like, really? yeah. Uh, it city, is the, yeah, the city yeah, of Poco okay. has okay. it as part of the fire. Yeah. It's actually down, I think, at the number one hall, the new hall down on uh, okay. Broadway. So the story was at the time, my grandfather was a long time, uh, he was the volunteer, the Poco at the time was a volunteer firehouse. Right. In fact, my family, my dad and my uncle grew up in the firehouse itself. Wow. Um, so he was the long time chief. That's amazing. A volunteer chief. Cool. And he uh, drove two of them back i think um so <laughs> the time if you wanted a new fire truck you, they were in ontario right um that was actually if i remember correctly he drove it back and took the opportunity as a big baseball fan he stopped in detroit so that thing <laughs> okay. wow. parked the poco uh fire truck in tiger stadium's parking lot <laughs> ah, went cool. to uh, a tigers game yeah. And then drink Might as the well if you have to make that commitment yeah, yeah. in the fire truck. So, so there's a, a photo of us uh, or uh, in here kicking around somewhere of him <laughs> dressed up in the 90s. I think that's probably the one you see. Yeah. Yeah. They got the hat on him and the jacket and he's probably, you know, in his early 80s with the same truck that he drove back. Wow, that's they, amazing. They've got a truck he drove one back in 47 and then one maybe in like 51. So wow, like that. crazy. But uh, yeah, so he was, and we had at the time, there would have been four members of the volunteer fire department all worked here at Poco Building Supplies. Wow. So when they got a call, they literally left. Yo, there's all the employees. Guys. They left. The I can't imagine that. Like, <laughs> there was a coffee container that they left on the counter. That yeah. was like an I, IOU, or you put your money in for whatever you were taking, or you yeah. wrote down what you had wow. to pick up. They never even closed the doors. It was Sam Whoa. Waddell, my grandfather, I think Bob Gillespie, and one other guy, oh. and they'd go off on the call and then come back and the doors would... Imagine doing that in today's yeah. era. It's, like half the employees work elsewhere. Like you we see trust, the results. You Every Halloween you see the results when you put the candy in the bowl. <laughs> yeah, you that's the right. Bowl. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. would be today. You yeah. always have a few kids yeah. and just like... The first yeah. guy might drop money in the bowl, the second guy would take it up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. that's kind of a neat thing is that uh, you know, my grandfather always had a lot of you know civic pride. He was an alderman as well too, as in, in addition to being a volunteer mm. uh, a fire chief and uh, was always wow. really involved in the community. and. Uh, yeah, it was kind of a, right. a neat anecdote that yeah. goes with it. Yeah. On that note, was uh, was any of your family members involved also with the city, with uh, running for mayor or anything like that? I was reading a little bit about that. Yeah, well, Harry was the, I believe it still has, 
uh, not that it's a record, but I think yeah. he's the longest serving pork or bull there. Oh, okay. um, Len Travelay was another long serving one, but I think Harry was uh, the mayor for 21 or, or maybe it was 27. I'd have to go back and look, but right. in, into the 20 years of being uh, the mayor. Mm. And, so uh, stepping up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're in really good hands with Brad West yeah, right now. Yeah. And uh, the yeah. way uh, you know, everyone's scrutinized nowadays, I don't know that uh, any <laughs> civic, uh, civic run be would scary, be in my right? future yeah. down the road, but no, we're really happy with uh, our local council and mayor yeah, right sure. now. But uh, And then my grandfather, John, was an alderman as well, too. Right. Uh, so wow. they both you know, kind of took yeah. that civic responsibility yeah. really. Absolutely, uh, really I love important. that. Yeah. yeah. So just sort of following the, the history of, of the company, in 1967, Timber Mart, you guys were one of the co-founders, right? So how did, if you know some history on that, how did that start? Not a founder, I guess. Uh, well, we're so one of the first, the first 13, yeah. 13 groups that, or store, independent stores that came together to okay. form a buying group. Yeah. Essentially, that they could go out and then yeah. um, yeah. negotiate with vendors on mm. using their scale of all those companies coming together. Cool. So mm. that started off as a very small company, uh, or a very small organization, mm. uh, with 13 members, and now it's over 500 members uh, nationally. Wow. Headquarters in Calgary, it's obviously grown it's taken on some other buying groups that have been incorporated into it mm. but behind uh, Home Depot and Lowe's and Home Hardware we're typically about the fourth or fifth biggest buying group in Canada with wow. our, our volume now so that helps as independence it's a, it's a great place to be because it allows us where we want to mm. maximize our buying power yeah. with those other groups but we're not beholden to anybody in terms of like specific programs we can right. still buy anything at any time mm. so that's what makes us so um, like the ability for us to go out with you come in and say well I, I know there's this product and it's through a vendor that maybe we don't have a relationship with well we can go out and either form that relationship or, yeah. or go buy it on your behalf right and right. it doesn't matter who who well we, we're not owned by anybody but there's no yeah. corporate parent speaking down and saying no you have to sell this brand of this and right. this brand of that so yeah it allows to be really flexible right. i uh, see that uh, I, I you know i look at a lot of the bigger organizations and richard branson is a popular guy that talks about this when he first started uh, virgin air he talks about competing with some of the big guys yeah. and one thing that gave them a huge benefit was that when they wanted to adjust anything they didn't have to wait for months of approval right. yeah. they were able to mm -hmm. be malleable and yeah. just adapt to that yeah. change yeah. and everyone else was kind of like waiting 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 yeah. so well and then even in covid how helpful oh, that yeah. was for us because on a day-to-day -day basis we could go you know what what we tried to do today didn't work very well right. let's do something entirely different yeah. tomorrow there's nobody else it's me and him at right. the end of the day right so um, that allowed us to be really flexible and we'd heard about, you know, not to knock necessarily Home Depot, but there were right. these giant lines mm -hmm. in some of the big box retailers yeah. and we were turning orders around in like an hour and you, wow. you could sit outside in our parking lot, call us, we'd send you the link for payment yeah. and then someone would walk to the door and hand it to Crazy. you. Crazy. And for a small store like ours mm -hmm. that isn't really set up for detailing just yet, but at least we had the forethought to allow for online payments and that yeah. sort of stuff. And just the timing of that, like no one knew that obviously COVID was yeah, around the right. corner, mm -hmm. but for us to have rolled that out a year before, so we mm -hmm. kind of kinks were already out of it. We weren't on the fly trying to adapt a new payment yeah. system. Mm -hmm. So we were we were on like running the moment right. it started because mm -hmm. yeah. we shut down for 13 weeks to store traffic. Okay. So we were doing curbside and deliveries only. Really? And uh, you know, Jeff was outside running a machine Absolutely. every day, running a forklift. And yeah. We were picking on order orders on every cart we had. <laughs> really? Wow. Yeah. yeah. It was, uh, yeah. But it, it, to, to go back to Timber Mart, yeah. one of the benefits again of, of being part of Timber Mart was during that, we're not waiting for head office at Timber mm. Mart to give us instructions like yeah. Chris said. Yeah. But on top of that, they were putting us in a position where we were able to have, uh, you know, basically putting us in touch with every Timber Mart in BC all across wow. Canada and sort of figure out what each of our problems are and problems that we hadn't seen yet right. and we were able to get ahead of some of oh. them we were able to give advice to some of those that were struggling on mm. different areas yeah and it really put us so that, able to bounce the off idea yeah absolutely there. like things mm. like trying to get flexi like at the mm. start we didn't know about who if we we're going to open back up if we needed barriers who were the yeah. vendors because that stuff was going up almost on a daily basis really? trying to find it 
because there was you know like the the, the right. best stuff it originally was the you know mm. cheapest material like three sixteenths or quarter inch plexiglass yeah. all of a sudden that was everybody used it up right and then all of a sudden huh. you're getting quotes on like five eighths plexi and it was like ten times what you talked Crazy. to a guy about the week before right. so wow. it was little things like okay what are you guys doing for hand sanitizers and you know like where yeah. are we getting stuff and so be able to talk to other owners who mm -hmm. are in the similar situation to ours yeah uh, to be able to you know go out and get those resources mm -hmm. out of them yeah. was really key because it was and then the flexibility on top of that of being an independent right and right. not having a corporate overlord that was making yeah. those decisions yeah. for us was really handy huh. yeah. yeah so um you know on that topic of covid um without saying i guess examples of you know specifics what you guys did about you know adapting she kind of mentioned that yeah what was your methodology or thinking about okay so we've just had this huge event happen like what was your guys thinking moving forward was that like let's just be really really safe and you know you know, employees number one, are we going to adapt? Like, you know, I, I would say before employees came staff yeah. and mm. protect our own staff right. at all costs. And we have staff of all ages. We have staff that have health issues. Um, you know, for us, that was first and foremost. Um, but I think more than anything is keeping them working and, and keeping our customers, um, giving them the ability to, right. to continue working. Um, I would say, I, I think maybe we shut down for a day or a day and a half or Only, something like that wow. just to get ourselves set for wow. The new transition into right, yeah. basically what we became for three months, which was a you know, uh, <laughs> pre-order pick up in the parking lot. Yeah. And our parking lot was full for three months. Right. Um, but yeah, I think more than anything, it was just a matter of making sure that our staff was safe. Yeah. And that we, you know, without us coming and getting the proper stuff mm. set up, they were going to be able to continue working. Right. And yeah. We're not. We were able to send some people home and have them do their job almost to full capacity from home yeah but in some cases that's nearly impossible yeah, for some of, of our staff and and we didn't want to just pick the ones that we could send home and you'll be working and the rest of you will we'll yeah. figure it out later i mean we wanted to make sure that we had a job for everybody mm -hmm. yeah we, good, we also didn't know what the designation until we knew that construction was going to be considered an essential uh, yeah. oh, industry right. at the time yeah. we like my fear and, and i don't mean to speak for jeff but i'm sure it's probably the same thing mm -hmm. was that like um, our big concern was how, like, what's going to happen if we close down? It wasn't a concern for myself or him. Like, the reality is that he and I were going to be okay. Right. Like, we're very fortunate. Yeah. Um, whether it's your family or whatever, like, mm -hmm. my concern was the staff. It was like, what if, you know, we know that there are probably some people living paycheck to paycheck. Mm -hmm. um, maybe some people that, you know, we know their families. We know that they're the chief right. red, uh, winners in the family. Mm -hmm. and that was a real concern was if we shut down, what's gonna happen to these people right and let alone all the things that start to back up like you know you lose someone do they come back mm. do they you know how long are they gone yeah, for? Right. what was our staff look like we didn't know if this was gonna be we're closed down for two weeks two months yeah. we're we gonna be closed for you know mm. longer than that we didn't yeah. know mm. and I mean you know, there's obviously a lot to talk about in terms of like the, the financial backing. Mm -hmm. I just thought the fact that we were so lucky to be in a place where at the very minimum the government stepped forward and mm -hmm. you know there was money available right away. Yeah, yeah. If people had to stop working, mm -hmm. we were really fortunate that we only had two people that uh, used the the SERP. We didn't. We wow. actually didn't. Uh, there was nobody that was told that essentially didn't need to work or yeah. maybe I should say one maybe one Pure job island. simply because of the way we restructured. Right. Um, but everybody else pretty much had the opportunity to work all the way wow. through it. And one person just because of her childcare concerns, like which exactly what Sarah was for, yeah. she couldn't continue to work for us. What would you guys say, I mean, for other local businesses that might not have had the know-how to adapt, that kind of gave you guys that edge to be, you know, to make this happen? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's interesting. I don't know that there was any great formula. It was really just a matter of saying like, you know, how are we going to get through this? What can we do differently? Yeah. Um, and then just try and adapt to it. And like I said before, like that feedback, if mm -hmm. something a customer said, look, like this isn't working, a four hour lead time isn't working, mm -hmm. you know, or calling in isn't working or me showing up and we were thinking, okay, can we still have the yard open and let people yeah. come in and load up? Because Allowing people to load up is actually way easier than <laughs> having your employees have to go up and pick an order right, for right. somebody. Especially, you know, if it's coming down to guys like to get out there, put their hands mm -hmm. on a two by four, look at the crown, yeah. and, you know, mm -hmm. and determine. So when your order shows up, you pre picked. Um, not World everybody difference. was super happy. Oh, I don't like those, you know, right. those two pieces mm -hmm. don't look very nice. Can you swap them out? That just backs it was, up everything, right? Right. There. It was way easier if that person could just pull in, but then. Yeah. 
then we couldn't quite control the flow of people right. in here and then you need more people out there controlling the number of people that come yeah. in and there were all these different mm. things that played into it so it was a matter of us trying to find a system that worked for us that kept everybody mm. safe and also that you know hopefully placated the customers mm. because that was the big thing was just making sure that people were still yeah, showing up right. well the one thing we knew right off the bat we knew yeah. we were still going to have our delivery business okay so that was yeah. a positive we could at very least we could staff our yard mm. Staff our trucks, yeah. and we could get job, uh, you know, deliveries to site. Yeah. And where we didn't know was how well, how busy we were going to be with foot traffic coming in and doing pickups yeah. and, and call-ins and, and computer orders. Um, and, and we quickly learned that we were going to be far busier than we would have ever expected. Right. And I mean, I think that was our first reality check. We did about two or three days where we thought we were going to be able to somewhat control the traffic and the orders coming in and out. Just by word of mouth yeah and we quickly realized that's next to impossible <laughs> we were doing more orders now than we had ever done yeah. really and so we had okay. to come up with sort of a separate uh sort of an outdoor shipping uh log that yeah. we would have for picking orders because you know you had to have them in a timely fashion but mm -hmm. there's a guy that's already here waiting for his order there's another guy that's not going to pick it up to the end of the day so yeah. you're trying to qualify these things right. so you don't have somebody mm -hmm. sitting in the parking lot for yeah. excess amount of time um, but really it was on the fly and I, and I will say it's a testament to the staff mm -hmm. uh, more so than anything. Everybody okay. was willing wow. to change their position. Um, there wasn't really questions asked. I think everybody understood that we weren't asking you to do anything different because, you know, uh, for any personal right. gain, it was yeah. completely based on we want to wow. keep you working, yeah. we want to keep the business going. And, you know, it's going to involve, including myself, you know, putting my boots on for a few months. Right. And, and yeah. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. My background is coming from the yard. Okay. Um, I got to work alongside a lot of guys that I, I don't necessarily get to work with every right. day. Yeah. Um, so that was nice. But that's a big, that's, a, like that's a big deal. boss a little bit. Hey? <laughs> <laughs> it's something that's tasting new. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But no, it really was. And, and again, just getting, you know, that's, that's where my ties are. And, and going back out there with the guys and, and really get my hands dirty right. again it was nice leading, by, leading from the front yeah well, and, and, and for us too i mean you had to have some kind of like rules or, or policies in place to, in order just to keep workflow going mm -hmm. but the goal was have the rules and then be ready to bend them as necessary because yeah. every mm -hmm. situation was unique and use common yeah. sense like if something wasn't making sense mm -hmm. the employees all know that right okay well yeah generally this is our rule but in this situation you know, makes yeah, more sense absolutely. to do right. something different. Yeah. Well, I think so, it's so interesting, so, yeah. Jeff, that, that what you said there. I mean, I see so many business owners or people that over time they move into a role and they kind of almost create this ego where they feel like I shouldn't do that stuff and other people should. And the fact that you jumped in and you were like, nope, let's just do it. And you guys were kind of on the, gr on the ground floor yeah. um, is a huge testament to probably also why this business has been around for so long. Yeah. And I mean, uh, you had mentioned that the staff kind of all realized what needed to be done and they, yeah. they were open to kind of switching roles absolutely on that note um, is there a philosophy that you guys have when it comes to training employees and that culture um, I, for example I see different business owners and bosses where they like to be really micromanaging because they want everything black and white right. right and then you had mentioned your father kind of was hands-off when you transitioned right. so is that also the way you guys kind of are with the employees well I think we're still honestly we've had some pretty big management changes in the last 12 months with our general manager leaving and now we've got a new sales manager and a new store manager yeah. and it was really important for Jeff and I both to let them know that they had a long leash isn't the right word but they had yeah. mm -hmm. you know like a, a lot of room to go out there and make changes mm -hmm. and and also you know to kind of develop their own uh, management, management style, style but yeah. also you know as long as we were all working in the same yeah. direction towards yeah. the same goal that's what was most important wow. and I think that you know that <laughs> In a way, Jeff and I are hand, very hands-on in the sense that like, we both get here at 6.30 in the morning when yeah. the store opens, we're both on the counter, right. we're both, you know, like used to doing, I don't know, it's at a grunt work, but like we're no, just... But we fill in on other, when right. people are on holidays, right. we step and in, we, we do right. other jobs. So Jeff does shipping and, you know, like I cover different salesmen at different yeah. times. So it's really important for us that we know on the day-to-day -day what's going on. We get feedback directly mm. from the customers, we're on the counter, mm. and then after a certain period of time, you know, I kind of go up to my office, Jeff does the same, yeah. I do all our commodity buying yeah. so and then I'll you know switch over more to do more phone stuff rather than mm. down on the counter mm. but I think that yeah, I think that helps in terms of like you know because the 
your other sales guys are down there and they're watching how you interact with customers, yeah, how absolutely. you take care of the details. And, and if you're setting the right example yeah. down on the counter, mm-hmm. then that's that's a great way for yeah. them to learn. Yeah. But at the same time, not being, like you said, overbearing mm-hmm. on our, our managers and letting yeah. them handle problems, letting yeah. them, they come up oftentimes and that's the first thing, I'm, what are your thoughts on how you want to handle mm-hmm. this? Absolutely. Not, not I'm going to tell you what to do, mm-hmm. what do you think is appropriate? And that's yeah. the way we often address problems with customers yeah. too. The first thing, if a customer is really upset and has had a problem, the easiest way to resolve it is, how would you like to see this resolved? Right. Okay. Sometimes they have a very, very realistic, like I just need this and this, mm-hmm. this will settle everything, uh, you know, a credit here, or can you guys do another delivery for mm-hmm. me and drop something off? Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's super reasonable. Yeah. And then, mm-hmm. then that guy's happy because he told you mm-hmm. what he wanted done. Yeah. Right. It was reasonable, no problem. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Whereas if I step in and say, okay, well, this is what I'm going to do, and he's not happy with it, mm-hmm. then he feels like I'm dictating it to him. Right. Yeah, know, sometimes he's completely unreasonable. <laughs> yeah. And I'll explain, I'll be yeah. like, Okay, here's why I don't think that's going to work. Yeah. What you want back is more than I made on this transaction to be done. Right. There's no way yeah. we're doing that. Yeah. And there are other times where just unfortunately there's going to be differences of opinion and yeah. maybe that gets better served yeah. somewhere else, mm, but yeah. generally speaking, um, you know, we we both yeah. are used to dealing with with problems on a day-to-day right. basis well, and yeah. those are the kind of things yeah. you can smooth over right away. Mm-hmm. And it's great that you sort of know that line as to how far you're going to let a customer go because it's so frustrating when I hear somebody say the customer is always right and it's like well to an extent, to an extent. Yeah. Like, yeah. like you got to yeah. protect your employees yeah. and well, it sounds absolutely. like you do a great job of that and that sort of leads into so you've been around for so long and there has to be reasons why that is I know that you're pretty humble and you may say like oh you passed on but I mean like is there anything in particular why you think you've been able to sustain a hundred years of growth and still being successful well I, th- I think it it part of it is has been like you know we've not tried to be anything more than what we are what our core values are mm-hmm. we're just we're here to help this community grow and right. in the same way the communities help us grow. and we mean that a lot like it, the, our community involvement is really important to us but we know mm-hmm. how well supported we are by loyal customers yeah. that are coming back you know year after year we've got guys that we deal with now who are second generation customers well, that were coming in the store in the 1960s you know you made it when you have second generation customers <laughs> yeah, absolutely cool. well and not only the customers we have second generation staff we oh, have, yeah you know yeah. and we've always try to, to maintain that we will promote from within and again that that helps the familiarity when people come into shop here yeah that they see people for 20 years and it's right. the same faces and that you know all it takes is you having one connection at a store and we've all been to a store for where sure, if you yeah. have that guy you'll go to that store over any other regardless store just of because price, that yeah. one guy yeah. and we have a lot of those one guys and right. they're in the yard they're in the store we have drivers that mm. specifically just you can tell that those guys make the that customer's day. They show yeah. up on site, you get cool. a phone call. I mean, mm. we're getting more phone calls in the last five years with complimentary sort of wow. advice and, and good feedback as right. opposed to just hearing the complaints now. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, the amount of forwarded emails and texts we get now just mm. on that guy that came here was spe- spectacular. He went above and beyond and, you know, mm. the same thing with the guys at the counter, just spending yeah. that extra time. Um, and, and to wow. us, you know, uh, that's not even necessarily training. I mean, I think that's mm. something that guys see other guys doing Mm. and they just follow suit and because we have so many uh, senior staff so many people that have been here for so long Mm. um, I think that's just embedded in those right those new guys that they just follow suit and on that note we were kind of talking off camera about kind of reviews and I thought it was super cool how you had mentioned that instead of looking at you know a negative review as something like getting all defensive about you actually Mm. uh, use it as an opportunity if you want to elaborate yeah and I was just saying before too Mm. I do respond to pretty much any form. I mean, there are other people have access to it, but it, you know, as soon as there's a, a review left on, say, Google, it pops up in my inbox right away. Yeah. So that's often, you know, guys been here during the day or a woman's been here during the day and maybe they got home and they sit down and then they write a review. So maybe it's nine o'clock at night and it pops up on me. Email. Right. <laughs> and I generally try and address them right away. And I see mm-hmm. every one of those reviews, like if positive or negative, I always try and respond. Yeah. It's just, if people are looking at reviews and they see a response from the mm-hmm. owner, I think it's really important because yeah, it shows absolutely. that I'm, I'm right. engaging and I'm not doing it just to show I'm engaging. I'm mm-hmm. doing it because I genuinely either really like the praise, I want to make sure that that person knows the staff member that they were talking about, mm-hmm. glowing, 
terms that that staff member is going to know about it in the morning. Right. Mm -hmm. And then I do treat the negative reviews as an opportunity. I mm -hmm. always try and get them to respond to my response. Wow. I give them okay. my phone number, typically here at the store, my name, so they have a person, mm -hmm. so they're not just railing against this company as right. being you know upset about something. Yeah. Well, call me and let's talk about this mm -hmm. and maybe there's an opportunity for us to correct this. I feel like other maybe local not. businesses, should, it's a good lesson to be had. <laughs> Chris and I, even before we took over ownership, it, it was always a you know a, a nice feeling uh, as a gailer that I'm putting my face and, and my name out there. And, sure. and like I said, I, I've always felt a lot better about a problem when I show up there in person than, yeah. than just send somebody else or, right. or try to deal with it over the phone. You just show up and, and honestly, that goes a long way. And you go from a guy being just angry at you on the phone, he, you know, he wants everything solved as quick as you can. You show up, you shake his hand, you apologize, you fix it. And that guy becomes a great customer yeah. going forward. He yeah, sees that you sure. care, he knows that if he has a problem going forward, that he's not gonna get lip service, that he's gonna get you personally. Mm -hmm. and, and yeah. You know, I think that goes a long way. And, and just, it's the nature of when you're delivering something on a five ton truck that might have 40 or 50 items that you're constantly trying to keep in inventory. There are times where, hey, we run out of stuff. Yeah. Traffic's bad. Something didn't show up on time that has pushed one of our trucks back on mm. delivery. And of course, you know, that guy on the other end has a framing crew of eight guys or six guys or four mm. guys that are standing around waiting. We've told them there something's going to be there on time. We understand those frustrations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's about, you know, if you can manage someone's expectations as best as possible, and that's something we do talk about in terms of like, mm. you know, you come in and we talk about a delivery. Let's mm. talk through like, okay, just because I say I'm going to try and be there at one o'clock mm. doesn't mean maybe have 10 <laughs> people standing there at one o'clock <laughs> at the ready that you're paying, you know, yeah, yeah. To, it, there may, we might need some flexibility and it's up to the staff to communicate those mm. kind of things to people properly. But you know, that the nature of the business is we do run into yeah. some headaches yeah, right now. You can't control it if the second arrow's bridge is jammed up. Yeah. Or, <laughs> yeah. They're calling you guys to blame you. <laughs> well, yeah. and, you know, we do, all of our trucks have GPS on them. So mm. if anybody calls at any time, we can say, okay, your truck is about two minutes away from your job site. Yeah. It also allows us to, okay, we can look back. Last week, customer, you know, does it, I got billed for an hour and a half of crane mm. time. Does that seem right? Well. Yeah, the crane was engaged for an hour and a half. Yeah. Those little things, uh, that type of technology that we've invested in has made our life so much easier. Because mm -hmm. right, rightfully so. You got yeah. billed for maybe the wrong amount, two hours. Oh, mm -hmm. no, you're right. Yeah. It was only an hour. Cool. That was our yeah. mistake. But yeah. you know, that, that sort of thing that has really helped us out, especially managing the trucks. Yeah. Because yeah. Uh, you can see exactly where your, where your trucks yeah, are. Yeah, super time. helpful. Yeah. And sort of just touching base on the technology side of things, we spoke about it a little bit with regards to your social media following, yeah. in particular Instagram. So I think we have to touch base on the fact that you guys have mm. quite a large following. Yeah. And, and I do think that there's a lot, a lot of older businesses uh, that isn't nearly as, as, you know, been around for as long as yeah. you guys have been, yeah. but they're very against sort of like the social media like oh no it's not about that and they yeah. they try to keep it just completely different than the whole social media game what has your perspective been on social media and how have you guys grown to such a following well i think we're you know both personally as as users like you know i've grown up in my mid 40s you know the last 10 15 years mm -hmm. it's been one different thing after another right. until you know obviously facebook and instagram yeah. so you have some legs twitter right. has some legs yeah uh, thankfully i'm not on parlay so i don't have to worry about <laughs> yeah, that yeah, yeah, or tiktok yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but i think we realized that the importance of being out there um you know we aren't uh a huge company with massive marketing dollars but if you're using your marketing dollars properly on social media it yeah. gets you in front of a lot of people They're, you have the approach either the shotgun blast of maybe um, you know magazine or print where the, yeah a lot of people that's getting delivered to but mm -hmm. how many of those people are interested in what you're trying to offer them right. mm -hmm. whereas social media with proper targeting my ad is landing right in front of that guy that's looking for something that I have. Yeah. And and that was a really, you know, a, an eye opener. When we started doing, uh, using Google especially, mm -hmm. uh, both for advertising purposes and optimization of mm -hmm. uh, our website, which yeah. we're constantly updating our website. Nice. Not mm -hmm. only like versions of it, like we have a new version coming out 
uh, down the road. Wow. We're trying to always stay one step ahead. As soon as we see the Kim competition creep up, <laughs> and it starts to look like ours. Well, now it's yeah, time yeah. to step into something right, else. Right. Huh. And um, that's been like a real, I, I have to say, like, you know, I pointed at Jake on that one who really drove us uh, in that direction, our marketing manager now. Okay. Um, my sister does all of our coordination mm -hmm. on all of our social media and does a fantastic mm -hmm. job of curating it. Yeah. And uh, like you said, 15,000 followers is no small task Absolutely. for, you know, for yeah. a, who, who would think that a building supply store would have 15,000 <laughs> followers? Yeah. But as long as you're not out there trying to sell someone, mm -hmm. you know, a widget or you yeah. know, a hammer or something on a daily mm -hmm. basis, right. if it's an inspiration and like a cool outdoor mm -hmm. uh, living space or something mm -hmm. that you have in mind, or if you're, mm -hmm. you know, design oriented mm -hmm. and you know that every day there's some different content that you're going to be able to look at on yeah. that site, I mean, maybe you don't spend very much time, but we're constantly in front of you. Right. And that's mm -hmm. really the most important thing right now yeah. is remembering, oh yeah, Poco Bunk Spots, they have this, they have that, they yeah. have this. Yeah. And, and that's what social media has done for mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think it, it was an industry wide, um, you know, somewhat lag there is that I, I think everybody in the building supply industry, including ourselves, when we first started, you know, touching base and, and sort of right. playing with the idea of social media. Well, we're a building supply company. Yeah. What, what is social media right. going to do for a building supply yeah. company? I don't think it resonates necessarily right away. That mm -hmm. there's other opportunities to it, and that could go to any business. It doesn't yeah. have to be building supply. Just because mm -hmm. you know you don't see yourself as an online presence, there's other ways to sort of tap into that. Right. Like Chris said, we don't go on there and throw a sale item out every day. And right. I would quickly unfollow most companies if that's all I said. I'll, yeah. I'll Google or I'll go on your website if I want to look at pricing yeah. and, and mm -hmm. chase deals. But we, we've gone to more of the inspiration side and Courtney cool. has done a great job at just sort of tapping into people's ideas and, and mm. really sort of you know driving those into the, the store right and I think it's I think it's great that you said that and that's also uh, the way that we approach yeah. marketing yeah. we like to just offer value yeah. you know even for me I hate being sold to even though I'm in the industry when I see yeah. another someone tries to sell sold me it, or just listed yeah on the, it's, it's one of those things yeah. where if, if you're constantly seeing someone just says you know, buy this, there's a deal or this and that. Like you said, you're gonna unfollow them. Yeah. I like the people who give me free information sure. that, you know, value yeah. essentially. Mm -hmm. um, that's kind of, you know, even in a sense mm -hmm. what we're doing now, yeah. we're trying to give our audience value yeah. so that in turn they say, oh, well, I wanna use Poco Building Supplies or I wanna use these guys for real estate, yeah. right? They're not they're not gonna use us because we're offering a deal. Yeah. They're gonna use us because they like us. Yeah, right? yeah. And, yeah. And, so. and also too, especially with SEO and SEM, a big thing for us has always been like that how quick we can respond to people and it's not necessarily with response to every single one of their questions but just letting them know like say you're you know you're sitting on your couch and you're interested in some decking or something and you know you jump on our quote request page and you send uh you send in a quote request and five minutes later you get a response says yeah no problem we've got that we'll send you a quote first thing tomorrow morning wow. Blown away. what i'm yeah. hoping you're gonna do is put your phone down hmm. go back to watching your tv yeah, that guy's gonna take care of me tomorrow. I right. don't need to keep scrolling to all the other competitors, mm. possibly, and and that has been our approach to it. And oftentimes you get a you know the feedback like, oh, I wasn't expecting a response to this at ten o'clock at night or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I don't do that as often as more. And thankfully, actually, there's someone that's kind of taken over that role. I yeah. used to respond to all those, mm. and we got a guy now that's uh, kind of almost 100% dedicated to that, yeah. and he's doing a fantastic awesome. job with it. But that's what I told him. You don't have to have all the answers to the person. Mm. Just let them know that. You've seen their their response or their email, mm -hmm. and you respond to them. Yeah, we'll get back to you with this. Nice. And if that just means you, like I said, put down your phone and you stop looking at our competitors, mm -hmm. well, then that's giving us a leg up. Great, absolutely, that's awesome. And then so um, so with regards to the business side of things, another thing that you know I'm super interested in is, have you guys ever thought about opening like another location? Yeah. Or what's the future hold for Popo Building Supply? Yeah, that's a, a good question. <laughs> um, well, I'll let you jump in here too, but trying to, I mean, part of it is just the logistics of finding, like we run on three acres and we're considered a small building supply wow, wow, okay. store. Most okay. of our competitors are between six and 11 acres. Wow. So to find that amount of space at a reasonable rate in this market, as realtors you guys can understand, commercial yeah. space, yeah. Uh, difficult to do. So to open up another iteration as we are, I don't know that we need to do that. We can continue to use this as our base for deliveries. We have kicked around the idea of possibly another like small satellite store, more yeah. that's hardware focused. Okay. But given everything that's happened, I think the natural evolution for us would be to look at maybe uh, whether it's Poco Building Supplies online as an actual right. retailer, but maybe looking at doing some e-tailing, right. given how much 
you know, with traction we've got on mm. the SEM and the SEO side, that if we could then direct people, um, you know, to shopping yeah. directly online, mm. we kind of do it a little bit now, but because everything can be volume dependent mm. and you can't just, you know, jump on and I want 30 pieces of decking. And, right. You know, like, exactly. Could you do that? Yes. But the disruption really quite isn't quite there yet. Mm. And until somebody comes in and is able to do that, yeah. a couple, couple different companies have tried. Yeah. But it, it's kind of tough. Like people like to get their hands on our right, products. Right. Right. Yeah. On a big, you know, if you're buying a ten thousand dollar deck package, yeah. you likely aren't just going to do it by clicking. Right. Yeah. Now we've had people that have bought yeah. that amount without ever coming in. Yeah. But usually it means I'm getting some mm. samples in their hands and getting an idea of, of what it is right. ahead of time. But I do think that. You know, more likely oh. we're going to be in an online space. Yeah, the, the uh, real-time pricing is a hard one. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Our pricing changes daily yeah, on the commodity side. Yeah. Um, so and getting, again, so when you're talking, I can go on to Home Depot and order mm -hmm. a whole, you know, a, a massive order for my house, but their pricing changes quarterly at best, and okay. they don't go through anywhere near the commodities per individual store that we will do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they can hold those prices for you know set amount of time. Mm -hmm. For us, we'd be updating that website pricing daily. And it, it, you know that's not something that we're completely you know. Uh, it takes a lot of work. Yeah, I can imagine, but yeah, it's something but that you know if you know COVID's been any uh, sort of sign. I mean, this is where the future is going. I don't see us not having masks in stores even after uh, things yeah, start to get back to sure. normal. And, and I, I see a lot more people. I mean, you see what Amazon's doing and some of these businesses are doing yeah. um, online and how how big their companies have grown mm -hmm. in just the last nine months. I mean, I think anybody would be naive to think that we're not all heading somewhat in yeah. that direction. Right. Um, but yeah, for us, I mean, the logistics of it are tough um, as far as the online stuff. Um, but we're we're working on it constantly to try to find that uh, that balance. And I think again, we're closer than most at this point and on our side yeah. of things. But I think people are still looking for that price click yeah. quantity add to cart yeah. and move on. And we just haven't got there yet. But uh, mm. And you, and you need to be really prepared to get mm -hmm. into that. You have to, you know, for us to be able to make sure that our inventory was all isolated properly for our online sales. The last thing you want is going through and finding out that, you know, like we move a lot of inventory here. A lot of these boxes look the same and mm. you have human error and our inventory isn't always what our computer says it right. is. And when you get into e-tail, or re online retailing, mm -hmm. you need to make sure that that stuff, yeah. you want to hit an order fulfillment rate, do it properly. Mm -hmm. So you didn't, we didn't, we've talked about it. We've looked at this for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. We just don't think we're ready to dip our toe into it and do it, uh, not do it properly. Right. So if we're going to do mm -hmm. it, it's going to be done properly. And I think that's why maybe having a separate entity, separate mm -hmm. inventory, rather than trying to do it all out of, uh, of one brick and mortar, right. might not be the Makes best sense. thing because we just have so much walk-in traffic. They're yeah. controlling our inventory all the yeah. time. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a tough thing to do. Right. Yeah. Now, kind of switching kind of topic, um, just about you guys in particular, if Poco Building Supply wasn't here, you know, what are you guys doing? Where could we see you guys? I know you mentioned you guys did some things earlier on. Yeah. But. Well, so I started here when I was 15. Nice. I'm 37 it's, it now. It runs in your blood. I, you know, like. I, beyond a little bit of travel um, nice. and then starting the, this business with a friend of mine, um, which really wouldn't be somewhere where I'd be today. Okay. Um, I, you know, I think this industry for me is is become somewhat of right. just what I know, and and I can't see myself, um, you know, moving too far away from the industry. But I, I uh, my honest answer is I don't yeah. see myself doing anything else. Right. I uh, we've invested our our time and and yeah. majority of my life into this business, um, and now financially we are even more <laughs> invested. Right. right. Um, so for me, I mean, this is a success. Or nothing, um, right? And okay. I don't see anything but uh, success in the future for right. us. And, um, yeah, I, I would probably think of something else in this industry right. that would, you know, even on the, the e side of things. Yeah. Um, did but, you always want to? Did you always know you were going to be an owner of some sort, or did you? Well, uh, so when I started my my first business there with a friend of mine, we traveled for a year around Australia and Thailand. Wow. And we wow. had a book that we just threw ideas in every day, and I yeah. mean, I was 18 at the time. Um, and we just, in our mind, we knew, well, first of all, I knew that I had this job. Yeah. You know, if I came mm -hmm. home, I had this, but the reality of it was that we wanted to do something on our own and we wanted to be our own boss. And so we came up with a, you know, uh, just a massive 
group of ideas every day of you yeah. know, whether it was a tattoo design we drew or yeah. today we Anything. were gonna come up with a pressure washing company right. that at 18 years old and we yeah. get home we'll be 19 we could do that the yeah. overhead's small and it's something that we can you know make our own hours and we can enjoy ourselves and, and we would worked mm -hmm. alongside of each other and we got home and and uh my friend's father had had this curbing done in his house and he kind of said well, what do you guys think so, well Let's look into it, and we went that direction. And, and again, it's it's not something I would go back to, but yeah. um, it was just you know the idea of yeah, working for yourself, and, right. and um, you know I think uh, maybe just showing myself even, and Chris yeah. is probably in the same boat that you know you you do have some something beyond just poco building supplies. Right. I mean, I think both of us being here from such a young age and the expectation that yeah you probably are going to take over and, and everybody else's expectations mm. were probably the same they see you know a three generation company and the fourth right. generation working yeah. what are they working towards probably to take it over and yeah. then I think you know Chris went to school and, and found his own path and I think that was part of it is we both wanted to maybe venture on our mm. own path and and see where it took us yeah. and the reality is is when we got the opportunity i think we both saw that this is a great fit and cool. uh, mm. you know to be able to do it together was mm -hmm. was i think the the real uh the end result was yeah yeah uh, uh, no questions asked and we cool. were both gonna gonna get together and do so but uh, yeah short answer i, I don't have it where I, i'm gonna be after this i'm cool. gonna be doing poco buildings plus for the rest nice. of my career I hope. nice cool chris yeah. you yourself you know it's everything's kind of uh, been thrown off a little bit with like you know what i would have said maybe a year ago before mm. uh COVID and that and you know i have a real passion for cooking and oh, wow. food and that sort of thing and as much as i you know maybe thought uh, that would be something that i a dream of but yeah. knowing a couple of my friends uh you know who really struggled uh, as restaurant owners mm. through through COVID. that would be a really tough thing now to look oh, at we so just now with orange kitchen and bar and yeah. that's what we kind of talked about yeah. So, yeah but i mean you know you know Perfect dream job, maybe I'd had a, yeah, a, fly, yeah, a fly in, fly fishing yeah. lodge somewhere, nice. really there you go. guided cook, uh, yeah, you know, something like that. Yeah. But I, whether that would be a reality, I yeah. think, like what Jeff said, the fact that we were both away for the business, mm -hmm. have gone and worked for other people. I worked for a mm -hmm. fairly large marketing company, Aussie, or, yeah, it was a professional development company that uh, mm -hmm. it was called Aussie because uh, it was originally started by a bunch of Australians. Mm -hmm. um, and we, while I worked there, they got bought out by another big mm -hmm. uh, company called editor and uh, have it um, that they were an online marketing company that wanted to come in and take over the, the brick and mortar mm -hmm. once I went through a big corporate merger and we moved and wow um, and got to work under some great people that I still have really fantastic relationships with that I still keep in touch with in New York cool. and uh, it was more just I think venturing out and realizing that I, yeah, I could easily go away from the business mm -hmm. and go do something on my own um, but I do like the idea of kind of you know the flexibility Jeff and I have you know we don't keep track of each other um, mm -hmm. we're both flexible in our approach we both have young kids mm -hmm. we're running into that age where where we both need uh, the flexibility to be able to stay home sometimes because of childcare or mm -hmm. take off early for because he's coaching hockey or oh, nice. uh, you know that sort of thing and I don't think you get that with a, a lot of jobs so yeah. as much as the responsibility you know weighs heavily on your shoulder and uh, you know you can take stuff home with you and the phone never really turns off and you've got to deal with people not showing up for work and, and covering shifts and all the headaches that mm. come along with being a business owner is that the upside to that is you know don't want to sound like you're complaining mm. the upside to that is that that's the flexibility and if you do well then you know you do, you right. do really well financially right. as well too hopefully pass that along through to your your uh, your employees mm -hmm. and make sure that everybody you know feels that way mm -hmm. and, uh, and and you can be a little more flexible with your time and and how you sometimes yeah you're less flexible but there, <laughs> yeah, are, there are times where I think he and I yeah. have a really good good relationship that way where we yeah. uh, you know where he can text me in the morning and say I'm gonna be an hour later or I'm yeah. gonna be in today or, or whatever mm -hmm. and it's no problem because I might need to do the same thing and we have that approach too we have a lot of employees that are our age right now that are mm -hmm. all running in the same age you like the guy calls yeah. and says I don't have don't have uh, my wife can't go to work today because there's been a COVID exposure or yeah. this yeah. or that what are you gonna say like, yeah, yeah. I know. I've got no kids. Answer. I got okay. Well, we'll just try and work around it. Take yeah. some phone calls at home as best you can, and yeah. we'll work through it. Mm -hmm. We try and be flexible because we live the same life that a lot of other people mm -hmm. 
that uh, work for us do. So, sure. uh, well, and again, cool. that is a testament to the staff. And, yeah. and yeah. so many people here that, you know, uh, the longevity of, of some of these people's tenure here, they, I mean, that's second to none in most businesses that I see. I don't see people, uh, you know, we were unlucky enough to lose uh, a few guys of. 30 plus years earlier wow. this year, mm. but we still have some here that have right. been here that long. Mm. And when you have a business that's 100 years old, you don't get there by not having, you know, your day-to-day -day yeah. op operations running mm -hmm. fairly smoothly with or without us. For sure. And, and that is really been, you know, a godsend for us is that we're able to step away and this place won't miss a beat. A after some time, I'm sure it'll start to, to fall apart, but yeah. uh, you know, a day or a week goes by, if we're in a pinch, if, if he's stuck at home with COVID or whatever, yeah. I don't think there's any fear in either one of our minds that if we're not here, that anything's gonna change. Oh, and, and really dependable, loyal employees that, yeah. that, 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 are, that are really the backbone of this place. Yeah. Cool. Well, and that you know, speaks to some of the questions that we talked about, mm -hmm. about, you know, what do you think of, of this place long term, or what mm -hmm. would uh, you know the thoughts about Poco Building Supplies be? Mm -hmm. And I would like to think that it's it is a great place to work. We got a lot of people that are 35, 30, 35 it's years. Yeah, that's a big deal. Uh, yeah. You know, with the two guys that just retired, we're both plus 25s. Wow. Yeah. Um, we've got some 40 year guys in right now, yeah. <laughs> and I mean that's part of the struggle yeah. is that that institutional capacity when it leaves, it's hard to replace. Right. Both. Yeah, sure, I mean yeah. it's both a good thing and a bad thing. Mm -hmm. It's good in that people have stayed this long but then we almost had this one generation of people that were all coming towards the finish line at the same mm -hmm. time and also we're staring down six or seven retirements with oh, probably a five-year wow, span right. we're like wow we can't what do you need to do that's well it's okay. it's no surprise wow. that yeah. with the six to ten retirements that we're going to have in yeah. a three mm -hmm. three year span or yeah. so that we've also got about 21 to seven year old kids right all coming up at that same time yeah. because we do have that we have next group, group of right. core awesome. core staff that's yeah, got like the poco building prize academy <laughs> yeah <laughs> like, everyone's wow. moving out. coming out the right I think when we came there wasn't a single employee that had a kid less than 13 or 14 wow. when jeff and i were here 12 years ago yeah yeah and now we have it's got to be close to 20. wow yeah, close wow. to 20. And now you're getting the grandkids <laughs> from the older yeah, staff. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy. Cool. Where I started to, to really notice it, you know, we order all the, the giveaway clothing and then the staff clothing and so on, and, and I started to order kids', kids shirts. Yeah. And I, was, you know, I'd never done that in my life, and I just thought, well, you know, yeah, why not? I would yeah. love to put my kid in a Poco Building yeah, Supply yeah, shirt. Yeah. And yeah. And the feedback I got from that was great, but as I started to hand them out, I started to realize, oh my God, you got that's a lot of kids yeah, here. Yeah, like, yeah. You know, and then when we go a little bit farther and we go into our brothers and sisters yeah. and, the, and the cousins and yeah, everything yeah. else, you might make you sure guys that might have to go into the clothing lines. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, I mean, it's it, it really is. It's you know that's one of the things I'll tell the, the new staff that we bring in that we do have a really good core of young staff mm -hmm. now. You know cool. you've got we've got young kids. And the sad part for us is with COVID that we aren't really like I grew up in the in the lumber yard and, yeah. and Chris did as well. I mean I got pictures and and even memories from some of our staff that remember me as you know a little guy nice. running around here at <laughs> five years old. Yeah. And I, I would love that we can do that with our mm -hmm. our own kids and I'd love to be able to bring the, the staff together and have more interaction with right. our kids and, yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. families but that's really been put on hold with this and, and yeah. that that's unfortunate and equally with the retirements and stuff these people have put in so many years of their life to, to helping our family and our yeah. family business and then they go and we're not able to give them a proper send-off right and that's something I think our, our parents always prided themselves on was you know at least celebrating your tenure and the time that you've put in and the help that you you know yeah, that leads even to like what we're gonna do. Like you know, we kind of had this idea for the hundredth anniversary, or different things that we were planning on yeah, doing. That's so right. we have no idea what we're gonna be able to yeah. do. Yeah. And I mean, who cares? Like we can do it next year, yeah. whenever mm -hmm. we're able to do it. We can't be, but it, it just been frustrating because sure. we're yeah, thinking, uh, okay, well, what yeah. what are the events we're gonna book weeks off and you know yeah. trying to plan a calendar? We have no idea. We don't right. know what what if we're gonna be able to get together with more than fifty people for really probably the rest of the year. Yeah, right. I mean, we host a contractor breakfast every year um, yeah. in June and basically bring caterers in, have all our staff, we have a bunch of suppliers come cool. in, set up tents, and we had to cancel that for the first time since we started doing it last year because of COVID. Yeah. And again, we want to plan around that this year, but you're talking oh, June, no, and it just right. doesn't even seem feasible at this point. Yeah. And, and that's, you know, as much as, like Chris says, you can do it another year, it really is. I mean, that that's our opportunity to say thank you to our customers. Yeah, for sure. Um, and you know we will find other ways to do it, but it, it, it does it, it does make things difficult to, to sort of show your appreciation to your staff and to yeah. your customer base when 
you know, the best thing you can do is pick up the phone or, or yeah. throw a message. Yeah. I mean, that, yeah. that only goes so far, and, yeah. and I think we're trying to do that, but, um, <laughs> you know, it's not as successful right. as, yeah. as showing mm. them in person. So, yeah, yeah hopefully we can get back to that sooner or later. Mm. Yeah, well, I think, you know, this has been an awesome conversation yeah. so far, and it sort of leads to our last question that we ask all business owners yeah. at the end of the interview. And so the question is, if for some unforeseen reason, Poco Building Supplies close down indefinitely. What do you want customers or everybody for that matter to remember Poco Building Supplies for? And I'll start with you, Chris. Well, I think it, I touched on it a little bit. I think mm -hmm. it'd be like to, it, to be remembered as a place that was a good place to work at. Mm -hmm. You know, that we valued valued people. Um, they we provide to them and they provide to us. And in the same way that I think that is our relationship with our customers, mm -hmm. that we're just as important to them as, as they are to us. They use this as a day in, day out resource. Um, and I think that people always thought of us as, you know, we're, we're never going to be uh, competing on the big box stores on a day in, day out basis right. on every item. Yeah. Our goal was to be fair and service you like crazy. Mm -hmm. And that was always our goal, that it was a friendly place to walk into. Everybody felt comfortable coming into the store. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that we were community-minded community and that oh. uh, we, were, we were all about, you know, customer service and fairness. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, I think uh, in, in this industry, we've heard, you know, many stories over the years of, of ways to cut corners and, and cheat. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think, to you know, uh, nowhere along the four generations has anybody stepped out of that line and, and decided nice. that we were going to try to take a shortcut uh, to success. Yeah. And um, for me, I would like this to be remembered as, I guess, family would be the word um, that I think of, and not necessarily Gaylor, you know, the Gaylor yeah. family, but just family altogether. And, and I've watched uh, father sons come and go, brothers and sisters, mm. and I've watched. Mm customers and multi-generations of customers come through here and guys tell me that they remember my grandfather and Ugh, you, wow. you know to me there's a level of you know family and community just amongst our staff and then you include the customers in that we have so many customers you know Chris and I were at the counter this morning and, and you almost to a fault we're standing there talking to somebody because <laughs> yeah. we've shared years right. of business yeah. with them and I've fail to realize there's another customer and I'm kind of like, can I get you out of here? Yeah. I need to get him going. Right, but right. I think a lot of our customers come in here and, and treat this as an extension of their family and, or right. of their business. At Polka Building Supplies, they're going to come here three to four times a week. And that's expected that, you know, that's just part of my week and the yeah. people I'm going to see, it's, it, it is just ties us all in. And I, you know, you are who you surround yourself with. And I think we've surrounded ourselves with some pretty good people and not necessarily just employees, but just mm -hmm. good people, mm -hmm. people that, you know, you're happy to sit down for half an hour and, and you'll lose track of time because you just talk and, and right. we have a lot of those. I mean, we're guilty of it amongst our own staff and I'll <laughs> tell, you know, my staff, I'm not going to give anybody trouble for not working because you're talking to each other. Yeah. I get it. And that's how we've become who we are today is by allowing us to, to interact with each other and, and uh, interact with the customers. I encourage um, all of our staff, you know, if a customer wants to waste 15 minutes talking to you, it's not a waste. Right. You're not not Absolutely. working. That's, nice. that's as, you know, you're accomplishing as much and, and making him feel good for 15 minutes mm, as you would sure. be stacking lumber or building right. order. Yeah. You know, it's good the, the relationships, yeah. you know, are what keep this company going. And, uh, and that could be relationships throughout or with our customers. And, and I really, you know, I feel like I've made some great friends Friendships, lifelong friendships with customers, with staff, um, vendors. Vendors, yeah. Another, yeah. And I, I, again, I think you know it, that was made easy for us by the longevity prior to us even mm -hmm. stepping in here. I think you know you've proven that you're a reputable business. Mm -hmm. You know, both, you know, when we got in at 88 years, yeah. Um, and, and that part, that's just going to continue to carry on. I mean, I don't think anybody's going to assume that uh, mm -hmm. you know the, the, what we've done to get us here is going to change now. Yeah, right. Um, yeah. But I, I do really feel like a, it's a family environment. Um, I love still coming to work every day. Um, uh, you know, I, I, Chris and I are totally opposite ends of the spectrum. He lives in Vancouver, I live in Pitt Meadows. But oh, wow. uh, um, I think that still that keeps us from you know being at each other a little too much because right. we don't see each other so much <laughs> outside sure. of, of yeah. work, and that allows yeah. us to really enjoy the time we get right. to spend together here. And um, yeah, I, I really do. I, I hope we're remembered as the Gaylers being a, a good family, but Poco Building Supplies just being a, cool. a, a good family environment, and, and uh, I hope it stays that way. Yeah, yeah. awesome. Okay, guys. Well, thank you so much for taking yeah, the time. You guys. It was an honor yeah. chatting with you guys. Yeah, it was great. You know, I'm sure a lot of people Appreciate got some it, good guys. insight and kind of how to run the Yeah, thanks, guys. Thank you. Okay, take care. Take care, guys.